Hello everyone! For today's video, I'm going to show you a new marbling technique that uses marshmallows. Marshmallow and buttercream marbled cake. And I'm also going to show you how to make these sugar flower petals and how to make flower petals using isomalt. So there's a lot going on on this cake and stick around and we'll get right to it. Today's video is sponsored by Barnabas Gold. This is our preferred gold that we use at the bakery and my preferred gold that I use on my tutorials as well. Barnabas makes genuine imitation and edible gold and silver leaf. This is the best edible leaf that I have used. And if you would like to try some too, there is a link in my description. So check it out and get that link directly to get your own. So for these sugar flowers, I'm using a peony cutter with a peony cutter mold, some shortening, a little bit of cornstarch, some floral wire, a small rolling pin, a flower former, a torch, and some gum paste. And first I'm going to cut these down to size. These are my floral wires. Um, these are not my typical floral wires. I actually got these in the floral department. They kind of have a different coating over them. I mean, it's it's kind of more of like a fabric almost. I'm not sure what it is, but it uh, you'll see that it causes a little problem, but it still works. And I picked three cutter sizes that I wanted, three different sizes. I find if you work in threes on um, decorating in general, that it actually gives you a more natural look, a more eye-catching look. And I rolled this out so that it's thinner in the middle and thicker on the sides. That way, when you cut them out, you have the bottom of your petal on the thicker end. And that is going to help me insert those wires into the petals without having to use, um, you know, those mats that have the, the divot in the back that you use to get your um, wire in. This makes it a little bit more seamless. And I'm just pressing each petal into the veiner. Now don't push too hard on the bottom part of the petal because you don't want to flatten out that slightly thicker section. You're gonna need that. And then use your balling tool to kind of thin out the edges of these petals just a little bit more. Just the um, ball needs to be half on the mat and half on the petal. This is actually just um, foam that you would use to add cushion to a chair if you were to refinish a chair, but it's never been used for that. I just use, I've always used it for my, um, my thinning. And what I'm doing is I'm actually using the torch to heat up the tip of the wire and insert it directly into the pedal. And what that does is it melts the gum paste onto the wire and you can use them almost immediately if the petals were dry <laughs> you could and then we're going to go ahead and let those dry those dried overnight and i'm going to make the isomalt now i just melted my isomalt according to the directions on the packet once you melt it and get it up to the temperature 320 degrees you do not have to do that again with these already um pre-made isomalt crystals and then I just kind of use my uh, scribe tool to kind of pull the ends of the petal out, the tips of the, the very outside edge out a little bit to kind of give it a little bit of a, um, a frilled little look on the end. And then insert your wire into the melted isomalt. Use gloves when you do this, guys. I am not, don't, don't do as I do, do as I say. I've worked with isomalt a lot and I know how to work with it and I should be wearing gloves, but if you are not practiced with it, wear gloves, heat resistant gloves. And I put each petal into the refrigerator for maybe five to 10 minutes and they were cooled enough to take them out. Now I'm gonna set those to the side and go ahead and get our cake ready. I did four layers of six inch cake in two inch high pans is what I use to bake these layers. That's my standard, that's what I usually do. And then I am just filling them and stacking them. Now I did not use a dam, a thickened dam on these cakes because my buttercream, it was cold. It was cold when I made this buttercream and it, um, it thickened up faster, a little bit more. So I didn't think that I needed to thicken it anymore than it already was. But typically I do use a dam. If I did this for an order, I would use a dam. Um, because I don't want it to squish 
you know, things happen on delivery. Things happen when the cake is brought from the bakery to its end location and things shift and things get warm. So use a dam if you are doing a cake for a customer. This was just for video purposes, so I didn't bother. And like I said, the buttercream was thicker. Now this is our crumb coat that's just locking in the crumbs and put it in your refrigerator until you are ready for the next step. At least well, 20 minutes. And to do this marshmallow buttercream or er, marbling, I measured the circumference and the height of my cake, and it just so happens that this eight-inch um, piece of, of acetate was exactly the height I needed, and I cut it to the length. Now I just put a little shortening on there to keep these marshmallows from sticking, and add a little buttercream to your corners underneath to anchor that acetate to the table. Now I just melted the marshmallows until they had puffed up. And we're starting to lose their shape. Mix it up a little bit. Add some shortening to your spatula. That kind of helps you uh, helps it keep it from sticking. Same thing with my hands. You can wear gloves if you prefer. And I added a little water to those marshmallows so that they um, didn't stiffen up on me too fast. I just kind of eyeballed it till it almost started to get a little runny. And just pull it through your fingers stretch it and just stick it to the acetate now since there's shortening on the acetate you're going to want to attach it to the mats on either side that's why it's stretched out beyond the edges of that because otherwise it would have just came right off of the of the acetate and then we're just marbling the two different shades of buttercream together a little bit you use a third bowl I have two colors and you use your third bowl and you put a little bit of each color in it just kind of marble them together a little bit and then just put dollops on your acetate on top of that marshmallow. And do this over your entire piece. And once you get this all on, kind of smooth it out. Try to get it more of a, an even thickness to make it easier when you're wrapping it around your cake. Now all the magic is on the other side. You can't see it. <laughs> but you can peek as you're going to make sure that the marbling is looking the way you want it to. And I just remove that uh, marshmallow off of, the, off of the counter. And then brought my cake out of, actually I had put it in the freezer. I usually put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes while I was doing that. Bring it out and I'm putting a thin layer of buttercream on the cake just to ensure that that wrap sticks to the cake. And just pull it up with your fingers and wrap it around. This is easier than it looks. Don't be intimidated. Just go for it. And use your smoother to get it firmly attached onto the cake. And now you have your ends uh, where the two pieces meet. Just kind of overlap them a little bit, put it in your freezer, and leave it there for hours. <laughs> and in the meantime, I just added some, a little bit of petal dust to these petals because I thought I, they just needed a little touch of color. And once I got those all done, I'm going to assemble my swags. I used three of each size on each swag. I did two swags. So I've got three medium or three small three medium and three large petals and I did the small petals on the outside like on the top and the bottom and then medium and then where the two pieces will meet you'll see what I'm talking about here where the two pieces meet you're gonna have the larger petals in the middle now you start this by adding some of your floral tape stretch it so that it sticks to itself start wrapping it around your first petal go down about two inches add your next petal then go down about inch and a half, two inches, at max two inches, and add your next petal until you run out of petals. And you'll notice that you are wrapping each of these together and your wires on your previous ones will run out, but since they're all wrapped together, it becomes one continuous piece. Now for the isomalt. I want to make them clear and I wanna add some confectioner's glaze. So I'm using my torch and I'm lightly touching up these petals. And what it does is it removes any air bubbles and the cloudiness, but don't hold them in one place too long because this isomalt will melt again. And I'm using my silicone mats to keep my surface from melting. And I have a piece of plastic wrap underneath all of this, underneath the mats. And that's just covering my surface because that, that confectioner's glaze is 
basically impossible to remove. So this way, after we have sprayed both sides, wait for your, start with your back side, wait for it to dry, and then turn over and do the front side. And when you're done with these and they're dry, you can just remove that plastic wrap right off the table. Now, I'm not kidding about leaving this for hours because you can see, even though I had left it in the freezer for about three hours, that marshmallow still wants to stick a little bit. But just use your fingers or an X-Acto knife and kind of cut it away from the, the acetate if you have to. You could maybe add a little bit more shortening, but I, I was being a little cautious because I didn't want to not be able to remove that acetate. Truth be told, this is my second time doing this one because the first time it stuck. So... I was just being cautious and then just fill in any gaps with some more buttercream and then attach your floral swags with I just make a U shape like a hairpin shape out of a little piece of um, some more floral wire and you just anchor it into the cake that way and just be sure if you are using these this is the best way that I have found to hold weight onto a cake like this but just make sure that you're communicating that with your customer and then insert your other petals that are made with the isomalt now yes you can wrap those wires if you want to if it's for a customer then i would suggest that and there's our barnabas gold that i'm going to use to add gold to the cake but yes those wires you can wrap with floral tape if you want to this is not for somebody to eat This is just for video purposes. I, I should say I stopped there because I mean to be telling you about this gold. They are on transfer sheets and all I'm doing is using a fan brush and then this other little brush to kind of scoop it off of the um, transfer sheet. And the cake is a little damp because it has some condensation happening from removing it from their freezer and it sticks right to it. If you need to, you can add a little water onto your cake to get your gold to stick. So there you go, guys. I think she turned out really pretty. I'm loving these lavender colors and this marshmallow fondant technique or marbling technique, I think is pretty fantastic. So I hope you liked it. I hope you decide to give it a go. And remember, you can do these in any colors that you want. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.